Welcome to Real Physics. This is an interview with Eric Edelberger, an eminent physicist who is head of the Itvesh group, which is known for the most precise measurements of Newton's gravitational constant. He holds very interesting views about theoretical physics too. He likes Marx's principle, for example, and I particularly liked his comments about modern theoreticians making proposals, but listen yourself. Professor Edelberger, uh, the gravitational constant is one of the most important fundamental constants. Uh, may we say that you're holding the world record of its precision measurements? Uh, it's not me, uh, really, but my Your colleague, group? yes, our, our group is, right. It's, it, Jens Gundlach is the one who's leading the effort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's uh, there. I think for about twenty years there are a couple of discrepant measurements of the right. gravitational constant. I think starting with the with the uh, Deutsche PTB. Yeah. <laughs> um, there have been a lot of discrepant measurements. Uh, some of them laying well outside the the respective error bars of the competing groups. Yeah. What do you think? Is this maybe a hint that something is misunderstood or is it just the usual business of, of difficult experiments? I think it's the uh, the safest thing to assume it's that it's difficult experiments you know measuring the absolute value of something is tricky always and in the case of gravity it's uh, e even uh, especially uh, difficult mm -hmm. and so you know I, I think the prudent thing to do is to assume that these are experimental issues that need to be uh, addressed by, you know, doing different, having different groups of people do the experiment, refine them, and so on. In this way, I think the method uh, from uh, our, our group is really uh, the, the most elegant one. Mm -hmm. yeah. It uses the fact that you know the turntable technology we developed for the principle of equivalence to. Yeah, uh, actually, a key it's, part. it's 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 a two hundred year old setup, but yeah. with, uh, enhanced with modern right. technology. Right, but it, but it's actually a there's a crucial I idea until uh, the, this uh, experiment from uh, Seattle, uh, the, the experiments all use dumbbell type. Mm -hmm. torsion pendulums mm -hmm. okay and what uh, Jens realized was that if you have a flat plate mm -hmm. instead of a dumbbell then uh, you are very insensitive to the and you measure its angular acceleration of, of a flat plate it's very insensitive to any details of that plate whereas before the precise mass distribution on this dumbbell was the leading source of uncertainty in the experiments mm -hmm. so that uh, you know, that was actually a very uh, non-trivial uh, recognition uh, and then the turntables make it very elegant and modern let me ask about uh, your, your personal motivation now do you have a so to speak a personal theoretical interest that drives you or is being an experimental top scientist just just uh, absorb its all efforts and you say uh, let's see what the theory folks propose we are doing the best tests well, actually, uh, I, I'm motivated by the fact I think in physics we're missing something very big. Okay, the cosmological constant problem that was addressed in this meeting and so on. There's some very big thing we don't understand, and that uh, w what I'm driven by is testing our sacred principles, so to speak, because maybe they aren't exactly true. They're obviously, you know, very good approximations to the truth, but maybe they aren't exactly true, and that's. You know, hoping that that will lead to some yeah. resolution. So you, you you think it's possible that from lab experiments that it might be um, it might be the correct theory, but there might be a form that is different for cosmological tests. Or uh, yeah, I think I I think you know it could very well be that the only place you would see these things is on cosmological scales. That that's that's certainly possible. I mean. Uh, the, the, we're looking in another direction because we know how to do that very precisely. Uh, but, you know, mm -hmm. who knows what uh, Der Herrgott <laughs> does. Mm -hmm.
one interesting figure in the history of science is, is Robert Dickey. Yes. And you mentioned him because he was uh, doing experimental work regarding the equivalence principle. Mm -hmm. And uh, Robert Dickey has also, um, in 1957, written a paper about, um, about an alternative idea of, of gravity. He suggested that the gravitational potential being of the whole, of the entire universe being related to the square of the speed of light. Um, from a modern perspective, that might, might seem outlandish, but uh, do you think that on a cosmological scale, such a, such an idea could, huh. could take over? Well, I, I knew Bob pretty well because I was at Princeton for a few years, and I didn't know about this paper, so <laughs> I, I can't really give you a. You know, he was at that point uh, very interested in these scalar tensor theories, mm -hmm. and he that had was actually that was a precursor of, of scalar tensor. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, he he had done an experiment to measure the oblateness of the sun, yeah. and uh, that got done better later by his mm -hmm. former student, uh, but uh, but. Uh, so I, I knew about his interest in scalar tension. I didn't. I'm not sure what you're referring to here. So, yeah. Well, he was he was he was concerned with Marx's principles yes. very in general. Right. Yeah, that, that's what he tried to re realize in another way later. But that was the very first approach. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I'm so. interested in Marx's principle also, and I have a a, a pet project, uh, which is. Uh, to see, you know, lunar laser ranging, I'm involved in lunar laser ranging also, uh, that uh, in essence determines the local inertial frame. Okay. Yes. Uh, and uh, we also know what the distant inertial frame is from the distant quasars uh, with radio interferometers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the question is, to me, an interesting one, are those two inertial frames the same? It's, it's kind of Mach's principle. Yeah, okay? exactly. Yeah. And uh, one way to test that would be to put a radio beacon on the moon that was a source, could be a source for these radio telescopes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The same moon, you know, right by one of the retro reflectors on the moon that we track with laser ranging. Mm -hmm. And so you could see then, is the inertial frame determined by the the distant quasars the same as the inertial frame? Yeah, as uh, the course pendulum, so to speak. It's yeah. Kind yeah. of, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very interesting idea that goes to goes back to, to Ernst Mach. Um, let me ask a final question about about contemporary science, um, which is quite different from from ideas like Marx's principle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, theorists uh, once in a while propose new particles, and you said that there was no evidence for it. Um, is your impression be that these predictions are sufficiently precise, or do they just come up with another prediction once you have falsified their last one? I'm afraid the latter situation is more close to the truth than I would like it to be. Uh, you know, theorists uh, are uh, very clever people, and uh, you know, they if there's something that some idea that they like, they're reluctant to let it fall, mm -hmm. and so they will try to, uh, and rightly so, they will try to uh, evade it. Uh, but that's. You know, in this test of the inverse square law, that's what we liked about the length scale of 85 microns. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if there's something there at 80, you know, to that idea, then there's a benchmark. Mm -hmm. you know? And if you get much sensitivity distances much smaller than 85 microns, things that have to do with the dark energy density uh, will be falsified, okay. Okay, okay. So you continue to falsify it. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying, yes. <laughs> okay, good luck and thanks very much.